everyone, and welcome to the Stitch Sessions. If you're new here, I'm Karen, and I love all things to do with crafting with crochet. And if you're not new here, welcome back. I love hanging out with you guys and sharing my love of crochet with you. It is September, gang. I can't believe it. Where did the time go? So it's the first Wednesday of the month, and that means we are returning to our crochet series for 2022. In this week's project, we are are working on our Shall We Crochet project for the month of September. And throughout this series, I've not only been working and discovering on creating different shawls, but more intensely, I've been focusing on different shawl shapes. So if you haven't checked out any of our previous shawls in this series, I'll leave a link for the playlist down below. Now this week we are going to look at creating a rhombus shaped shawl and many of you know this shape as the parallelogram. So some people call it a parallelogram, some people call it a rhombus. And so it runs kind of like a rectangle but on each end you've got one edge that runs longer than the other, if that makes sense. I'll also put a graphic up there on the screen, but you can see as I hold it up here, um, it just creates this really pretty kind of slanted effect. And I specifically worked on using a very simple stitch, and that is the alternative double crochet stitch which is also actually known as the extended half double crochet stitch. And I've used this stitch in a few other projects, which I will leave a link for in the description box down below if you'd be interested in checking it out. But yeah, I kept it very simple and then I added a mesh stitch every two rows of this repeat. So we're just doing five rows and then repeating those five rows over and over again. So. Uh, you can create this as long as you like. I love the fact that this can is a wrap, but it's chunky and narrow enough that you could use it as a big, chunky, fluffy scarf in the winter. Now, my wrap measures a total length of 70 inches, or 175.5 centimeters. And the width I created was 12 and a half inches or 32 centimeters. Of course, you can just keep making yours as long as you like. What I super loved about this project is I had tons of scrap yarn that actually was gifted to me. It was so delightful because I loved all the colors and the way they just worked so well into each other. Um, so this was perfect for a scrap project. I used up all of those scraps that were given to me and they just coincidentally worked out wonderful for a fall color palette. So I'm very happy with that. Um, you can make yours, uh, of course, all one color, but I think this type of project is fantastic for using up your scraps and figuring out how you want to kind of put your different color combinations together. Now to create the rhombus shape, we used uh, decreases and increases. So if you're still a little new to that technique, this project is the one for you to get super good at this because we are constantly increasing and or decreasing on each end. And that's what creates that parallelogram effect for your shawl. So it's pretty much it. You've got five rows. You're going to repeat over and over again. So for mine, I ended up repeating those five rows a total of 21 times. So that gave me 105 rows in total. So I know it sounds like a lot, but this project is fantastic for a mindless stitching project so that you can watch some TV or listen to a podcast or something like that. So I say, without further ado, let's check out the materials we're gonna need to create our fall fair wrap. Okay, so for this project, you're gonna gather all of the scraps you've got lying around. And I would recommend, I used a medium four weight yarn for my wrap. So I would definitely recommend making sure that all of your yarns are comparable in weight and remember, not all medium four weight yarns are created equal. And I have mentioned this in other videos before. And even here, you can tell like this is a medium four and that's a medium four. And they really don't look 
equitable. I would even say this is, I mean, it is a medium four, definitely, but it's on the lighter side. So just be aware of that when you're um, creating items. I mean, scarves or wraps or shawls, it's not the end of the world because you don't have to have them sitting flush to anything else, like if you were creating a cardigan, for example. So in this case, I'm just using all of my comparable weights. So just be aware of that, okay? So I would say for my wrap, that I probably used around three to 400 grams in total. I, have, I had lots and lots of scraps. I'm just gonna do a little sample portion of it for the tutorial to get you going. So that's why I only got a little bit here. For the hook size, I actually used a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is also known as an I or a size nine. And of course, make sure you always have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle on hand to sew in all of those ends you're gonna have to sew in at the end. So let's get started on our wrap. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with this lighter color here. And so what we wanna do is we want to begin by placing a slip knot on our hook, and you can place that in any fashion that's comfortable to you. And for my wrap, I began by chaining up 53 stitches. So you're just gonna begin by creating a chain of 53 stitches. And make sure not to chain too tightly. Okay, so once you have your 53 chains, just make sure that they're sitting nice and even, they're not twisted. Now, because I'm just creating a sample here, I did 33 chains. So in case you're wondering why my width looks pretty narrow, that's why. Yours will be a lot wider. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to find the fourth chain from our hook. Remember, we never count the loop that's on the hook. So we've got one, it's almost tight. One, looks like it's hidden there two, three, and four. We're gonna insert our hook into that chain, but for this first row, I want to create a very nice finished edge here. So I'm actually gonna turn that chain and see how there's bumps on the back. We're gonna work into those back bumps. So I'm just gonna turn my work and I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna to have to help it along into the back bump. And we're not gonna do a typical double crochet, nor are we gonna do a half double crochet. We're gonna do an alternative double crochet, which is also known as an extended half double crochet. So we're still gonna yarn over, we insert our hook, we we'll pull through. We have three loops on the hook, but what's different here is we're gonna yarn over and only pull through one loop first. Just like that. So you still have three loops on the hook, and now we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three, okay? So it's hard to tell right now, but that chain three, those three chains that were left behind, those will count as an extended half double crochet. So essentially what we've done is we've started with an increase in the very first stitch. And so row number one begins with an increase and then it ends with a decrease. And that is what's gonna influence the shape of our work to create that parallelogram effect. Now I have used this stitch in a few projects before, and actually I'll leave a link for those in the description box down below in case you're interested in checking out how else I used this stitch. So let's continue on. We're gonna do that again. We're gonna go into the back bump of the next stitch, and you're just gonna insert your hook Pull up a loop, so you have three loops. Yarn over, only pull through the first one. So you have three. Yarn over and then pull through the last three. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. And then I'll do it again. So yarn over, find the next back bump. Insert, pull up a loop. Only pull through the first one. And now pull through all three. And that is your alternative double crochet, which is also known as an extended half double crochet. 
So from now on, I'm just gonna call it an alternative and hopefully you guys will know what I'm talking about. That is the, the only stitch we're gonna use for this whole project. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue, so that is an increase there, you're gonna continue all the way down your chain, placing one into each stitch, and then when you have two chains left, I'm gonna meet up with you because we'll have to do a decrease on this end here. Okay, once you have two stitches left, row one is looking like this. Just love that texture. So it creates a similar texture to a half double crochet in the sense that it creates three loops. So you've got the V loops that sit along the top, and then it also creates these loops that sit on the side. So in total, you have the bottom front loops, the top front loops, and the top back loops. I have two stitches left, so we are now going to end by decreasing at the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into that back bump there. I'm going to pull up a loop. And now I'm just going to go into the very next bump, which is the last one. I'm going to help it through there, and I'm just going to pull up another loop. Okay. And so in this case, I'm gonna have four loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through the first loop only, just like we did before. So I've still got four loops, and now I'm just gonna pull through all four loops to decrease these two stitches together. So that makes them one stitch. So at the end of row number one, because we increased at the beginning and we decreased at the end, you are now working with a total of 51 stitches. So for me, because I used 33 stitches to begin, I now have 31 stitches, okay? But I'm always gonna use, uh, I'm always gonna refer to the 51 stitches because that is the width that you should have. So from here on out, you should always have 51 stitches. You want an odd number of stitches because when we work on the mesh stitch row, you'll see why. So now let's move on to row number two. So for row number two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. So because we finished the previous row with a decrease, we're going to begin with a decrease. So you can see already that it's kind of leaning this way. So we're only gonna chain one and we're gonna skip this first stitch and we are just going to place our alter alternative double crochet into that next stitch. So this chain one is shorter, and so that is gonna count, it's not even gonna count as a stitch, and that will count as our beginning decrease, okay? So you're just gonna insert your hook. Now remember, that is the top of the stitch. We're gonna insert right through there, pull up a loop, pull through the first one, and then pull through all three. So at the beginning of row two, see that? You can really see it's leaning. You will always begin with a decrease and then we're gonna end with an increase. So you're always alternating between increases and decreases. You're gonna get a lot of great practice on your decreases and increases. So now you just continue on as usual. Now you've got stitches to work into with your alternative double crochet stitch. Just one into each. And this time I'm gonna meet up with you when you have one stitch left at the end of row number two. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of row number two and I just wanted to point something out. It may look to you right here like you've only got one stitch left, but remember you've gotta have 51 stitches. So if I were just to go into here, I'd be missing two stitches. So. If I turn my work, remember that when we create a stitch, the loop of that stitch always sits to the right of it. So this loop actually belongs to this stitch here, but remember that this chain three does count as a stitch. So we will have to work into the top of that chain three there. So just be aware of that. And the best way to just double check is if you get to the end and you don't have your 51 stitches, then you know you're missing some stitches there. So I'm gonna place my, this would be my 49th stitch. Okay, 
And now, because we decreased at the beginning, we're going to increase at the end, okay? So basically, the all the increases will stay on the same side while all the decreases will stay on the same side. That's what is gonna give us, again, that rhombus type of shape. So I really wanna try and find the top of that chain three, which is right there. And I'm gonna place an increase into that chain. So I've got one, and now I'm gonna go back in there and do two. I always try and get a couple of loops when I go in there, but if I can't seem to grab it, I'll just have to make do. Okay, so now you can see, if I pull that up there, see, now you can see that this side is starting to lean. Hopefully you can see that still, yeah. See how this side is starting to lean this way and this side is starting to lean that way. So your work will dictate where you're going. So if you've got, if the top of your work is leaning that way, then that's an increase. If it's leaning in like this, that's a decrease. So even when you turn your work, see how the top is longer? That's your, that's your increase side and that is your decrease side. Okay, but if you just follow the five row repeat exact, you should never go wrong. So you should now still have 51 stitches all the way across. Now we're gonna go on to row number three and this is going to be our mesh stitch row. Okay, so for row number three, you're gonna begin by chaining three, one, two, and three, and turn your work. Now remember that we just did an increase in the last row, so we're gonna to need to do an increase in the next row. And so what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna add one more chain, just like that, okay? So you have four chains. This will count as a double crochet chain one. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go right away into the very next stitch and you're going to place your regular alternative double crochet. Just like that. So right now it looks like more of a V stitch because it's done on an increase, okay? But you'll see as we progress how the mesh stitch will continue. So now you're going to chain one, you will skip the next stitch and into the following stitch, place your alternative double crochet. Just like that. So see, now you have spaces in between your stitches. That is what you're gonna do all the way to the end. So I'm gonna chain one again. I'm gonna skip the next stitch and into the following, I'm gonna place an alternative double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch and stitch into the following stitch. Okay, so I just want to pull that up so you can see. Just like that. So now you can really start to see the shape taking form there. So you're going to do your mesh stitch all the way to the end. And I'm going to meet up with you when you have got two stitches left. Okay, guys, I'm just coming up to the end of row three, and my apologies. Uh, you should have three stitches remaining, so as you get close to the end here. So I've chained one after my last stitch, and normally I would skip one and go into the next stitch, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to decrease this stitch and this stitch together, okay? So I've already done that chain one. Now I'm gonna yarn over, insert into that stitch, so I've skipped a stitch into that one, I've inserted and pulled up a loop, and then right away I'm gonna go into that next stitch and pull up another loop. So just like we did before, you have four loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first loop only, so you still have four loops. Now you're gonna yarn over and pull through all four of the loops on your hook, and you've created your decrease. Okay, just like that. And I always like to, at the end of every row, I think I've got a knot there, let's just kind of pull up the yarn, lay this down, and just see 
how my shape is working. So I can see here that this is definitely correct. I don't see any jagged edges. That's how you can tell that your decreases are in the proper spot, should be nice and smooth here. And then when I go over here, this one's a little wonky because it's it's four chains. But once I work back over, you'll see that it's coming out nicely. So that is the end of row number three, which is our mesh stitch row. So let's now go on to row number four. So for row number four, because we've just finished a decrease, we are going to chain one only and turn our work. So we're gonna begin with a decrease again. So we are now back to working regular stitches into every stitch. So that chain one will not count as anything. We're gonna go right away into the space here and we're gonna place one alternative double crochet. Okay, so we've now decreased from two stitches, because remember this is one and this is one, and we've decreased down to one stitch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into every space. So into every space now, we're going to place two alternative double crochets. So there's one, there's two, and then I do the same thing into the next space. Nice and easy, really straightforward. Two into every space. Okay, so your work is looking something like this. This first one might feel like it's dipping in a bit. Do not worry about that at all. So continue doing that until you get to your last space. Okay, so as you can see, I've had to change colors already. So I'm coming up to the last space here. That was that V stitch. So I'm gonna place, I'm still gonna place two stitches in here. So there's one and there is two. Okay, and now we still have to place our increase at the end here. So these two stitches that we've been placing into every space, these are just kind of evening out the row. They are not increases at all, okay? So it's just basically representing the post and the chain. So at the end here, you can see it's our increase. So we're gonna place an increase at the top of our chain three, which is right there. So I'm gonna place two alternative double crochets into that stitch. And I should still have 51 stitches. Remember, if you're unsure, always just go back and count. I know some of you are not big fans of counting, but trust me, this will just really make sure that your work looks nice and uniform. So that's just my little tail there. Oops. Okay, so I can still see that there's a nice, decent edge going upward that way. And on this side, my edge is going that way. Okay, so I've got that nice parallelogram effect. Okay, one more row, and then I'm gonna set you loose to just continuously repeat rows one through five, okay? So let's go on to row number five. And so for row number five is just another solid row. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three. We're gonna turn our work, just have to sew in that tail. And remember, we just finished an increase, so we're gonna to have to place another increase into that stitch, okay? So right into this stitch, we are gonna place a, an alternative double crochet. Okay, so now we have two stitches at the end, and you can see it continues to promote the work to angle out. And then you just continue, as always, placing one into each stitch, one alternative double crochet all the way to the end, and I will meet up with you again when you have two stitches left. 
Okay, so I'm at the end of row number five and I have two stitches left. Remember that we decrease this to one here. So we're gonna decrease these two together. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then immediately go into the next stitch, insert to pull up another loop, four loops on your hook, yarn through, so you have four loops, and then you're gonna pull through all four of those. And row number five is complete. And that is the basic pattern for our scarf. Okay, so you now just go back and repeat row one, two, three, four, and five. So in between your mesh stitches, you will actually have four solid rows. So just like my finished one here, you can see, so see one, two, there's the mesh stitch, one, two, and then one, two, mesh stitch. So you actually are gonna have chunks of four rows in between your mesh stitch rows. Now, as I said here, you're gonna start by repeating row number one, but remember with row number one, we started with an increase. But you see, you can tell here, we just finished with a decrease. So when we turn our work, we're actually starting with a decrease. So we just wanna be aware that what we're actually repeating is the two solid rows mesh stitch and two more solid rows. And so just pay attention, if you've just finished doing a decrease, you will begin the next row with a decrease. If you've finished with an increase, you will begin with an increase. And remember, the magic number is 51, or whatever odd number, like if you wanna make your scarf wider, in my case, I just did 31 just for the sample. But if you wanna make your scarf wider, you just wanna make sure that with each row, that number is consistent. Such a simple, simple little pattern repeat, but I just love how it created this really, really lovely texture. And especially with the fact that we gave it that rhombus effect. So I repeated these five rows for a total of 21 times. And I just, I'm, I'm so delighted with this, this wrap. I really, really am. And so, like I said before, I love the fact that it, it's small enough that you can make it like a big chunky scarf, but yet it's wide enough that you can just, you know, wrap it around you. If you're going out for a walk on a cool evening um, in September, maybe even in October. That's why I called it the fall fair wrap. This is a perfect one for doing Sunday afternoon fall activities. And um, and I was so delighted with the colorways and how they all came out. Again, very grateful to um, my dear friends who always give me uh, scrap yarns from their relatives. And this one was just delightful to work with. And I'm so happy that I got to use up most of that yarn. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project and enjoyed the simplicity of it and yet created something feeling like it was just a little bit more outside of the box if you're a newer crocheter. Now, if you have any deeper questions about the tutorial, please make sure to leave them for me in the comment box down below. Or as always, you can email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And as always, come visit me on the website and make sure to sign up for my monthly newsletter. I gift you a free written pattern every month, along with some extra photographs and behind the scenes of a lot of my patterns and designs. And if you've enjoyed this type of project, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And that lets me know that you like seeing these types of projects. So this one was part of our Shall We Crochet series. I'll also make sure to leave a link to the playlist down below. If you have missed January through August, we've had some fabulous different shawl shapes. I think you're going to definitely want to check out. And if you're new here and you've been having a good time, make sure you press that subscribe button and come hang out with me every week. I upload a brand new video every Wednesday morning. And sometimes I throw in some extra videos, some bonus materials, some behind the scenes, some travel fun. 
So uh, stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me every week. Thank you for continuing to support my channel through subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and donating through the thanks button. Thank you, thank you, thank you as always. And I look forward to continuing to bring you more crochet tutorials. And also don't forget to come say hi to me. I'm on the socials at Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. Now, in the meantime, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Happy crocheting. Take good care of yourselves. Stay cool. Stay warm. And I will see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.